deathless, painless, joyless, with promises of fortune sold, body and mind, to the highest bidder. Willingly they go, and unwillingly they are kept, the sleepers. Servants of S and Arp Corporation, but there is one, one that slipped through the cracks. Some say they are dead, others say alive, and more still say they never existed at all. However, between all who know the story, they are called. Citizen Sleeper was nowhere near my radar until I heard about it on a gaming podcast I listened to called The Besties. And after playing it, I was blown away. Citizen Sleeper is my favorite kind of sci-fi. Not about large events reaching the whole galaxy, but stories about the people and the relative mundanity of living in a sci-fi world. Being in space and having advanced technology is just a backdrop to the finely crafted characters and tough decisions made throughout. Citizen Sleeper reminded me a lot of writer Ursula K. Le Guin. She has a more philosophical approach to science fiction, dealing mostly with people and their hardships. Check out some of her work if you have not already, because she is just fantastic. The writing, design, and programming were all done by Gareth Damien Martin of Jump Over the Age, his one-man game studio. This game also features incredible drawings of all the characters done by Guillaume Seguilin. The soundtrack that you're listening to now is done by the very talented Amos Roddy, and the game was published by fellow Traveler Games. The premise of Citizen Sleeper is that you are a sleeper, someone who sold their consciousness to the s and Corporation. Sleepers' minds are put into synthetic bodies that can be replaced and put to work in harsh and often deadly conditions. By some miracle, you were able to stow yourself away in a storage container, and that container found its way to a space station known as the Eye. It is here that the game starts, and your story begins. There are three starting classes in Citizen Sleeper. The Machinist, the Extractor, and the Operator. They all have different pros and cons to each, having a plus one in one stat, a minus one in another, and zeros everywhere else. The main gameplay loop consists of dice and actions, and the main mechanical conflict is that of maintaining your condition, energy, and your clocks. I will get into clocks a little bit later. Condition and energy go down each day by one and two respectively. Condition you can think of as essentially your health bar, and energy needs to be kept above zero or else you lose more condition. If your condition reaches zero, you die. At the beginning of each day, or cycle, you get one to six six-sided dice rolled for you. You then use these dice to complete actions around the eye. A six is a guaranteed success, and a one being almost a guaranteed failure. Most actions have multiple segments, and each success fills up these segments until you fill it up all the way then the action is complete. Some actions have clocks, meaning they must be completed within a certain amount of cycles or they go away forever. This gameplay loop is simple, elegant, and instantly reminds me of tabletop role-playing systems like Powered by the Apocalypse and Blades in the Dark. Quests, or drives, usually involve completing one or more actions, and upon completion will reward you with a skill point. But the gameplay is not really what makes Citizen Sleeper a great game. In fact, if the storytelling didn't dovetail so perfectly into the relatively boring gameplay, 
this game would just simply not work. The stories told throughout Citizen Sleeper complement the gameplay so well that I blasted through this game, beating it in less than a weekend. I never felt bored or like I didn't want to continue because I simply had to know what happened next in whatever storyline I was in the middle of at the time. Every single one of the characters are memorable, unique, and distinctly human. They all have hopes, aspirations, struggles, traits, flaws, and motivations. I cannot think of one character throughout the game that was one-dimensional or flat. Having this many characters and making me care about all of them is an absolute feat, and I have not played a game in a very long time that has been able to accomplish that. Citizen Sleeper also pulls off multiple endings in a very unique, interesting, and narratively satisfying way. For me, the game could have ended at hour 5, hour 6, or 7. There are multiple out points throughout the experience. Usually marked by the end of a storyline, there are multiple ways off the eye, and it all depends on how you're roleplaying your character. This kind of storytelling also reminds me of tabletop roleplaying. The story's yours. You don't need to see everything the game has to offer. If the particular ending that you get is what you want, go ahead. No one's gonna try to force you into finishing the entirety of the game. The game ends when you want it to, and that's just beautiful design to me. You're even allowed to fail as many quests as you want. As far as I know, there's only one clock that, when it runs out, it actually results in a game over. This concept of freedom goes so far as there being no ending at all, which is what I ended up doing. Everything I did, I did for the people on the eye, and decided to call it my new home. Instead of being treated to end credits, I just didn't have any quests left to do and fell into a rhythm of comfortable mundanity, getting a drink with friends, visiting my favorite street food vendor and going to my job, fixing up ships with a friend of mine. I didn't have many problems with Citizen Sleeper, but I did have one which I think is really minor and nitpicky, but I'm gonna spend some time on it anyways. I spent all of my time on one playthrough of the game, the average completion time is around 6 hours, and I put in around 10. So by the time I got to completing some of the storylines in the back half of my playthrough, I was so overleveled that I could not fail actions. I would have to roll a 1 to even have a chance of getting a bad outcome from any given action. This made gameplay a little more laborious than it was beforehand. By the time I was finishing up the last storyline, I felt like I was reading a book and the gameplay was more like someone locking me out of the next chapter. That being said, I did nearly 100% the game, and I think most people would have finished the game 3-4 to four hours before I ended my playthrough. Citizen Sleeper's main theme is hard to clamp down on, because there are so many stories contained within. However, I think the connecting tissue between all of them is what it means to be human. The characters in this game all deal with one aspect of what being a human is, whether it be virtuous or corrupt. It showcases the human condition in a subtle, yet profound way that is incredibly hard to pull off without feeling ham-fisted or ideologically pushy. The stories blew me away, and even after finishing nearly all of what was available, it left me wanting more. Most of the game is reading which I understand may turn some people off. For me, however, the combination of the dice and action economy, along with the dynamic and well-written stories, made the reading the best part of the experience. Gareth Damian Martin absolutely blew me away with this game. Not often do I close a game and just sit at my computer for a while thinking about the experience I just had, but Citizen Sleeper did that for me. Gareth has also put out a free three episode long expansion for the game, which is just as good as the base game Citizen Sleeper. The title really says it all. You aren't a superhero, you're not a genius physicist, 
you're simply a citizen sleeper. To some, however, you become more than a sleeper. And in fact, to others, you may be more human than most. Thank you for watching.